What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and after four betas and a very long wait, Apple has finally released iOS 9.3.2. Why it took so long to release such a small update? Probably because this will be the very last iOS 9 update ever. And that's right, this could be the very last firmware that the iPhone 4S runs, the iPad 2 runs, and 3, and the iPad mini 1. So hopefully we'll see something else, 9.4 possibly, but I'm telling you guys, this very well may be the last iOS 9 firmware ever. So it's a very small update, about 90 megabytes for my 6S. Uh, in this video, like usual, I wanna let you guys know whether or not you should update, how's the speed and performance, what bugs still work, and basically every new feature. There are several. So very notably, the number one feature this update brings is the ability to toggle night shift and low power mode simultaneously. Previously, you were unable to do this. This option was grayed out on 9.3.1. Now you can go ahead and do them together. And that's great because night shift actually drains more battery life and low power mode saves battery life. So it kind of equals out. Next up, there is a change to the way that Siri treats links on the lock screen. And I actually posted a bypass just recently showing you guys uh, still works on the latest firmware. Now, Apple has patched that. And let me go ahead and toggle a uh, passcode real quick and I'll be right back. All right, so Siri, search Twitter for gmail.com. So uh, now we can go ahead and lock her device, activate Siri, and you can no longer drag down from Siri. So that bleed through that I previously showed you guys, maybe Apple has watched my videos, I'm so privileged, <laughs> but you can no longer drag down and get to those search results. Previously, you were able to do that a 9.3.1. Definitely uh, Siri, the lock screen bleed through has been fixed. All right, so those are the two official changes. As for bug fixes, there are plenty. So with Game Center, uh, the blank Game Center page issue has been resolved and the official change log actually highlights a few other changes. So the iPhone SE did experience Bluetooth issues with calling and being connected to a uh, third party Bluetooth headset or other Bluetooth accessories. Now that call quality has been fixed. An issue where you look up a dictionary definition has been fixed as well and a bunch of other smaller ones these I haven't experienced it's a very small update but it manages to pack in a lot of great things to make it more stable so before updating I had a 1.6 gigabyte available after updating let's take a look if that changed whatsoever Wow a lot of cached files did get cleared, three gigabytes available now. So that's 1.4 after updating, that's great. Guys, as far as major changes, that's it. Now, uh, what things have we used in the past that no longer work? So I can assure you that the circle folders glitch still is working. However, the speed glitch where animations would be removed completely has been patched. So Apple no longer wants us to be able to enjoy a no animation device. A lot of you guys are okay with this. It never looked too good in the first place, but you know, I did enjoy it. It's sad to see it go. How about my 3D Touch respring bug? Still present, so that's still working. All right, so I've got an iPhone 6S Plus right here running the latest 9.3.2. Let's see if uh, fifth time's a charm with 9.3.2 if the landscape bug has been fixed. Enable rotation and uh, nope, still terrible. I thought for a moment it was smoother but being on the latest firmware does not change the fact that I'm still experiencing this. So a lot of you guys have said that this fixes the issue. Let's see. Oh yeah, it does. So if you guys are experiencing that, just drag down and uh, it works again. Cool. So here is the Geekbench. On the left, the latest 9.3.2. The multi-core score is a little bit higher. Uh, the single core is just a few points lower. So really, I don't think uh, there's much of a difference here, but a lot of people have experienced that uh, animations have gotten better on older devices and that I will test later today with a full speed test down the line of every iDevice between 9.3.1 and 9.3.2. So stay tuned for that. How's battery life though? That I cannot tell you. I know there was a huge issue with a battery drain on 9.3.1. So hopefully some people can uh, report back here in a few days you know, say whether or not that's been fixed because at this point in time, there's no way for me to tell you whether or not battery life is better. All right guys, so uh, should you update? Absolutely, this is the most stable release of iOS 9 ever. It'll be compared to iOS 8.4. I mean, Apple did a lot of improvements, fixed a lot of the things they broke, so uh, the most stable iOS 9 release, what's not to like? However, if you're jailbroken, if you're waiting for an upcoming jailbreak, again, you guys do have to wait. There is no reason to update now. Stay wherever you are because no one can say where a jailbreak will release, what firmware it'll be on. The best thing to do is to stay on your current firmware. I'm making 
zero promises. I'm not even sure a new jailbreak will come out, but I'm just saying the smart thing to do is stay where you are if a jailbreak is worth it to you. I mean, when iOS 10 drops the first beta, you know, things will become more clear after we have a good idea of what Apple's future plan is. But anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. Just a quick preview of iOS 9.3.2. I will have a full speed test comparison up for you guys very soon. Peace.